Mum's cat. Something new to worry about. I have for many years told people who aggressively tell me that climate change is not caused by human use of petrochemicals and other chemicals and release them in the atmosphere and industrialization that actually it's caused by the magnetic poles. And I've been very skeptical of that theory. However, that theory is in fact false. Uh, current climate change is causing very cold snaps in the winter because of jet stream alteration and large dumps of ice, rain and hail and snow due to extra moisture in the atmosphere because the atmosphere is more laden with moisture now than it was in 1800 because there's a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which entraps all that energy which makes the planet hotter. It's demonstrably hotter over the period of time and it's not really an argument. However, there's been some recent research which isn't totally accepted as you'll see but is pretty convincing that we had a magnetic pole flip that the North Pole was in Antarctica or thereabouts and the South Pole was in the North Pole or thereabouts about 42,000 years ago and there's actual videos on what they're talking about here is quite fascinating I warn you it is a bit sciencey I will wait to the end to say what you should do to prep for a magnetic pole inversion. So this is going to come as a shock to some of you, but the Earth's a globe, and inside the globe is a lot of metal, because density goes inwards and it's spinning and it's hot, and it creates an electromagnetic field which allows us to block off quite a bit of really harmful radiation from our sun, the Sol, and without that it would be hard to live on Earth. And we do know that magnetic poles have flipped and we thought that was about 700,000 years ago was the last one and this new one if it's born out was about 42,000 years ago which could make it less likely that we're going to see one in our lifetime but it's weakening and it's weakened by about 9% over the past 170 years and researchers say another flip could be on the cards so which researchers and why do they say that I don't know oh I have mail However, it is true, a magnetic pole inversion, if it becomes very quick, would absolutely devastate life on Earth in the West as we know it. If you uh, live off the grid in the middle of nowhere, you probably wouldn't notice too much. That was the theory. We never thought that there was much climate effects of polar movement, and this is where it gets interesting in the research. It turns out we could be devastated. We all know that GPS won't work, compasses won't work, which is why people need to use a map and a compass for orientation and direction. So if the compass is out, you can at least sight from the stars and the sun and still use a topographical map. If you rely on GPS, it's not going to work with a polar inversion, and a lot of the satellites and a lot of the infrastructure we think of the grid uh, the parts of the electrical grid that remain intact outside of Texas would actually be devastated by a polar inversion, we think. We knew this, and it was one of the things that people have been worried about. What we always believed was, as scientists, that there would never be actually any real dramatic climate effects from a polar inversion. However... The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy notes that the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is in fact 42. When prophetic author Douglas Adams wrote this, he couldn't have known just how right he was. But first, this is a 42,000-year-old tree. We'll come back to that after a note on the Paleopocalypse. Every so often, Earth's magnetic poles flip, collapsing its protective magnetic field, allowing in galactic cosmic radiation. This proves to be somewhat of an inconvenience to Earth and its dwellers, what with the lightning storms, crimson skies, extreme UV radiation, and such. But more on that tree. Studying its growth rings, some clever people have now clearly placed the last polar flip at 42,000 years ago. As it happens, many not insignificant Paleolithic events share this precise moment in time. This sizable stump has enabled scientists to connect these 42,000-year-old events together in a unifying theory called the Adams Event. 42,000 years on, these scientists are positively giddy with excitement that the next apocalyptic polar flip may be just around the corner. 
So this team actually predicts quite a few events that happened about 42,000 years ago of a climate destructive nature and they prophesize that if we have a sudden inversion in the near future we would probably see pretty much the same climate effects that occurred 42,000 years ago. But not everybody finds the research that compelling as evidence. It's a one-off research that looks at a couple of trees in Australia. But the question is on top of all of that would we actually have massive climate failure and climate change on Earth? Well, not everybody thinks so. So they asked one guy who wasn't involved with the research what he thought about the research. And he said, well, I don't think it might be as extreme as they're predicting, which is extreme as you'll see. But it does give you pause for thought. He also noted that it's unlikely the Earth's magnetic field would completely disappear. And this, in fact, is true. What you would see is an overall reduction with some areas that are thin to zero and other areas that are almost normal. Unfortunately, we're also kind of seeing that right now. The hypothesis from the research is, and let's face it, this is correlational and it's hypotheses, it's guessing, is that they felt that the explosion in cave painting in Europe and other areas of the world about 42,000 years ago was caused because hominids like us went inside the caves and we couldn't go out much because of the radiation. You know, we could go out at night, there was very little food, there was huge changes because of ionizing radiation hitting the planet for about a period of time that was very acute initially and then tailed off quite quickly but overall lasted about a thousand years for the change. Now they said that well that may be true but there were evidence of cave paintings prior to 42,000 years ago which in of itself is utterly fascinating to me. So they also said it made Neanderthals extinct. Now, when people make statements like that, definitive declarative statements, like there is no such thing as human-caused climate change, statements like that, that are clearly false, and you're demonstrating false, it makes the other statements the person has made more doubtful. For example, the researchers said that 42,000 years ago was related to the extinction of Neanderthals. However, we do know that Neanderthals suffered a terrible reduction in population about 42,000 years ago, as did humans, and then they tailed off over the next 5 to 10 to 15,000 years and they became extinct. Maybe. Maybe they didn't become extinct. Bigfoot, Yeti, it's all been hypothesized as possible evidence of Neanderthal. And in a large degree, Neanderthals did not become extinct. We absorbed them into our own DNA. Well, let's hear from the researchers, shall we? So it's a bit of a geological and archeological whodunit. Before this work, we knew there was a lot of things happening around the world at 42,000 years ago, but we didn't know precisely how. And so this work has been coming together, bringing these ancient cowrie trees from New Zealand, which have been buried in wetland, digging them out of the ground and analyzing for the radiocarbon content in the rings. So for the first time, we've been able to actually precisely date what happened when the Earth's magnetic fields last flip. Yes and no. They're able to analyze what exactly happened in that specific spot in New Zealand. And you can generate that. And you can look at ring growth and what the atoms are there and all that stuff and make some guesses to what's going on globally in the atmosphere. But you never really kind of know for sure. While people knew that the magnetic fields occasionally reversed, everyone had kind of concluded that it didn't have much impact biologically or climatically. And we've found the complete opposite. And that's in fact true. Uh, magnetic reversal was known. It was not really associated with climate change. Nobody thought it was a big particular issue for climate. And yet what they found looking at the rings, what their assumptions are, what the hypothesis are from one set of data in one place on the planet, is that it triggered a massive die-off of life because of the radiation. It altered hominid behavior, became much more social and interactive inside of caves, hiding from the daylight, which was dangerous. Also starving, so we had to be more cooperative to get what food was left. It wasn't a sterilization of the planet. It was major problems. 
and it also they believed that it altered the winds and the jet streams so significantly there was massive areas of new drought where people hominids already were and also caused a whole bunch of problems for Neanderthals and people couldn't cooperate enough to actually become modern humans and deal with the climate change issues they were faced with. Beware of the assumption that man is God or God made man in man's image. It's a fundamental tenet of most religions. The truth is obscured by time. I for one do not believe we're particularly smart. I think we were very lucky. In that process of flipping from north to south and south to north, effectively the Earth's magnetic field almost disappeared and it opened the planet up to all these high energy particles from outer space. It would have been an incredibly scary time, almost like the end of day. Indeed, even if it only lasted for three months to six months, what we would see is massive famine across the planet. Massive creature and flora and plant and fish die off right the way across the planet. From a population of 8 billion, we'd probably drop to catastrophically low numbers, uh, possibly into the tens of thousands from there. Obviously, as soon as it started happening, the rich governments of the world would use tunneling systems that they have already and make new tunnels and put stuff in there and try and wait it out. Now, they have a time frame of about a thousand years where they could see the effects of this before it completely went normal and stabilized again. But as I said, during that time, parts of the Earth would be very, very irradiated. Other parts would hardly be irradiated. So there would be ways of dealing with this. But on an individual level, it would be the end of days. It would be apocalyptic for our society and real quick and quite unexpected for most people. Now, what can you do? Well, you become diurnal, you hide from the sunlight during the day and you work at night you have lots of plastic sheathing to cover the soil before it gets irradiated so you can grow some crops. You'd have to move a lot of crops indoors as much as you could. You need to have independent water and independent power sources and independent heating and cooling for your home because the grid will not be there and will not be ever coming back until hominids, humans, or other, bull terriers perhaps, actually rebuild an entirely new civilization, an entirely new grid. This would be a societal ending event. There would be no coming back from this. The best thing we could do is have little lifeboats of people sustained on what we could steal and grab as society collapsed to try and rebuild later on once radiation levels had dropped. It would be truly amazing. And if you do couple that with ice sheets across North America and Europe, clearly staying here in Toronto would be a bad move. But I'm not altogether sure I'd survive this sort of an event anyway, and I really don't think uh, Kenya's gonna welcome me if I show up with a couple of MREs, but you never know. What we've found is that the reversals um, have caused pronounced climate change, which was a huge surprise, um, but also uh, impacts on human populations that have previously been unexplained or mysterious. We're seeing things like a huge expansion in the ice sheets over North America. We're seeing wind belts around the tropics and in the Southern Ocean shifting. We're seeing this explosion of art preserved in caves around the world, the extinction of the Neanderthals. All these things seem to be happening around the same time. Like when I said earlier on, the trees were from Australia. They're not, they're actually from New Zealand. That was an error. I'm not going back and reading it because I'm a professional and uh, there you go. But it does throw doubt. When he says the Neanderthals were extinct, what he means is the Neanderthal population was driven to near extinction. And it's really important that you careful with your language as a scientist, especially when you're talking about issues that are politically troubling because you're attacking big oil or whatever. And you have to be very, very clear that Neanderthals actually were driven to close to extinction and in fact became an effective population, almost disappeared around this time. There were populations hanging on for an awful long time after this. And as I said, we're all partly Neanderthal. Some people online are way more Neanderthal than others. Can you spot that? But it was only when you started talking between different areas of science, you could see the connections. And before that, none of the different fields had worked out. 42 was the key event across multiple different areas. So there you have it. The answer to life and the universe and everything is indeed 42. Quite phenomenal how things are there. Perhaps we are in fact living in a computer simulation and all of this stuff is just data bytes. So I would like to point out there is magnetic field anomalies already. The magnetic field of the Earth is not 
homogenized and the same everywhere. It varies from place to place. And uh, you need to be thinking about these sudden events. As I said in the video I did about dressing for the cold, which you wouldn't have heard at the end because of the wind that came up, was the fact that the SHTFs generally that are going to get you are the ones you haven't thought about or planned for. True black swan events. This would not be a black swan event because we were expecting it. But for the majority of people, they have no clue this is going to happen and they won't be expecting it. So effectively, it's a black swan event. It would be society ending. There is no getting out of this one. You'd have to evacuate out of North America and Europe and Russia. You'd have to try and go south. You'd have to be fighting with the locals down there, plus massive numbers of refugees for very, very, very limited food sources because the radiation effects would be pretty much everywhere once we lose the magnetosphere around the Earth. We need it. So there you go. We'd all have to live underground and avoid sunlight. And I know some of you are already doing that and you're prepped for this. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you'd like to give me a subscription, I would appreciate it because it actually boosts my ego. I'm trying to get back to 3,000. I annoyed people uh, because I'm not right wing and I'm a vegan. Anyways, toodles. This has been a 2021 Arctic Terrier production. So we have built little tunnels for Wolfie. So how do you deal with the cold, Wolfie? Well, you stay inside, right?